It would have been very helpful to me as a parent in a situation to know early on, right away, that this is so much not about the food. I guess the first time there was a problem, I was at Girl Scout camp and I was 14. And then it evolved around age 15. I, I definitely was deep into my eating disorder by the time I was 16. He was a sophomore in high school. He was 15 at that point. This is me and my sister before she got sick. We took him right away to his pediatrician once we realized something was up, but we're told that boys don't, don't get eating disorders. Eating disorders have several different causes. One of the most uh, commonly recognized problems is the sociocultural factor that our society promotes thinness in just about everything we see and, and do. And I feel that I'm being judged and I don't feel happy with the way that I am. I do think as she transitioned into puberty, she felt a little out of control of what was going on with her body. And I was afraid to lose that control, um, afraid to lose the control, lest I gain a lot of weight. I never believed for those 10 years that I could actually be completely happy with who I am and what I see in the mirror. I don't really know why the control was so important. The fact that this is complicated, there's a lot of things going on in their heads and it's not just about the food. The food is just what they're using to control a little piece of their life. To the rest of the world, it really looked like I was just one of those people who was out there dieting constantly. Well, I guess I didn't know she had an issue. Never once did it occur to us that an eating disorder would be something that we would deal with with our son. It was not even on our radar. I, I mean, I, I was absolutely stunned. I, I didn't see it coming. It was such a dirty secret to me. I didn't realize she was still doing it, um, and she was obviously hiding it really well. Surprising that it it was as bad as it was, and it happened as quickly as it did without us really noticing what was going on. Uh, diet pills became an issue for me, a major issue for me. And she was exercising way off the charts, way off the charts, doing way more than she should have. And exercise was very compulsive for me. Exercising hours a day to try and work off whatever calories I had consumed. E everything focused around that. I got downstairs and caught him running around the air hockey table doing laps while brushing his teeth. He would use any opportunity to get in a workout. More recently, it's become clear that there is a biologic basis for these illnesses, that there is a genetic transmission and an imbalance in the neurotransmitters in the brain that can cause this problem as well. My first wake up call I had and I've never told anybody this. I had gone back to school, my second career, and I was getting a degree, and I remember sitting in the classroom and my heartbeat was skipping every other beat. And when it skipped that beat, that second beat was very painful. At my lowest, had to go into the cardiac unit. I was having so many heart issues. The really sad part was I was so afraid that if I told somebody that they would stop my behaviors that I never told anybody. She, she, she just kept losing weight so much and she would get weak and she would, her heart was palpitating and we'd end up going to the ER every few weeks. You know, I thought this was going to be a quick fix. I thought, okay, I'm going to get her some help, we're going to have her talk to somebody. Then I kept telling him, I don't have a problem, I don't have a problem. Because you're in denial yourself and then you don't want to admit um, that you do have an issue even though you might think you do because you want to continue to be in control and you don't want anybody to tell you what to do because you're trying to control your thoughts, behaviors. We really kind of felt like we could have talked till we were blue in the face and at that time um, the eating disorder was much stronger than we were. I think families are somewhat surprised from time to time as to how long an eating disorder takes uh, to uh, respond to treatment. Treatment is not quick. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It won't be over in a week, in a month, or even a year, or possibly even five years. Her life was at stake and her organs were starting to, to shut down and realizing that this was way more than um, 
than she could handle by herself or that we could even help her with. I'll always remember the look on the doctor's face when she said, we are afraid if you walk into the parking lot that you're going to have a heart attack. Immediately upon examination and assessment, he was put into the hospital. I realized that I was going to ruin my life if I didn't get help. So I was like, okay, <laughs> here I am. I mean, once you acknowledge that you do suffer from this, um, and that was the big stepping stone. The eating disorder was very upset that now I was going to be forced to eat. I was going to be forced to address the issues that I didn't want to talk about. It was years and years and um, a lot of hiccups and relapses and um, a lot of two steps forward, one step back. The eating disorder beat me up inside. Two steps forward, one step back. You need to be very patient. I wish I would have known more about um, eating disorders in general. It took us many years to realize that this is nobody's fault. It's not an illness of choice. It's not Andrew's fault. It's not anybody's fault. I should have, I should have been a better parent. I should, have, I should have seen this coming. Wasted a lot of time blaming myself, wondering if I had said something or done something, modeled something that caused him to become body conscious or food conscious. And it was really wasted time. But then I realized that, you know, regretting and wishing that I would have seen something wasn't going to make her better. But I was really worried because I, I really could, didn't know how to fix it. I knew I couldn't just tell her to eat because that just doesn't work. One of the hard things um, with watching my sister go through this was knowing that I couldn't fix anything and I couldn't just snap my fingers and make it go away. Totally. Totally just wanted to fix it. My husband has been absolutely amazing throughout all of this. When I was first released at home, he didn't really have a full understanding of what his role would be other than supportive. You have to support her um, and you can't force her into anything because she's my spouse. I mean, it's, uh, um, and so she needs to kind of make that choice and make those decisions on her own. We needed to be very patient that this was going to be her war, her battle, many battles, and that we were not going to be able to fix this one as parents. My primary doctor that I preferred going to had shared with me that if this cycle continues, you will never be able to have a child because you're not allowing your body to do the things that it needs to do. I think a part of it was a maturing process. She had to go through this dark place to, to see what it was that she wanted, and then she started to fight for it. Kids to me has always been um, what I've dreamed for, so that, excuse me. That was very difficult to swallow. Please be patient with me. It's gonna be a long journey. It's gonna be hard. But you have to do it with them. And I think that's, that's what they need. They need you to do it with them. You can't do it for them. They can't do it by themselves. They need support and they need you. Don't give up on me. And just knowing that you're not going to give up on me will help me immensely. I just, you know, I'm just there for her every day. So um, whatever I did, I'm glad I did it. And so I would encourage all of you to learn as much as you can. Read, listen, watch. The more education you have on it, the more helpful you will be to your loved one. You need to take care of yourselves while your child is going through an eating disorder. You are their main sole support and you should not feel embarrassed or ashamed. For my young adult life, Everything revolved around food, exercise, diet, maintaining my size. And what I wish I would have known is how much more there was to life than that. Life is, is a, lot, a lot better now. It's really good. And now I have room for life. And I have room for friends. And I have room for relationships. And I have room to be in a career that I really love. I would just tell her to keep fighting. It's tough. 
but it's really worth it. It is worth fighting for, and that there are so many powerful, strong, and happy people who live long and healthy and beautiful lives. It's just so great to see the sister that I, I knew that was in there, to see her reaching her potential instead of being distracted and being lied to by this eating disorder. It's really important to remember that you can find yourself again. Once you can release that, once you can let go of that fear, and that it is the best choice you will ever make. My son is just the biggest blessing in my life, and I, I just love him so much, and I'm just so thankful that I was able to get myself healthy enough to be able to have a child. You can get through this. That was pretty much what I wanted to say.